Welcome back friends, Dan Vega here, and today we are talking about Project Loom and specifically virtual threads. What are they and why should you care as a Spring developer? These are all things that we will cover in this video. We'll even round it out with a nice little demo on using virtual threads in a Spring application today. Uh, so that's really exciting. It's been announced that virtual threads in Project Loom are targeted for JDK 21. That is exciting, that's later this year. This means that they might show up in Spring Framework 6.1, which is also targeted for later this year. So it's about time we all sit down and learn a little bit about virtual threads and why we might care about them as Spring developers. So that's what we're gonna do today. I wanna go ahead and run over to a whiteboard. We'll start there to kind of talk about some history on why we need virtual threads. So let's do that. All right, so I put together this graphic that talks through embracing virtual threads in a Spring application. We'll talk through what the thread per request model is, which leads us into how threads work in Java. Then we'll take a look at some scalability solutions, how we can kind of solve the problem that we have. And then we'll take a look at virtual threads and how they solve this problem as well. So what I wanna do is dive in here and zoom in on this. Let's see if we can get a good spot here. Okay, so embracing virtual threads. Uh, Project Loom aims to reduce the effort of writing, maintaining, and observing high throughput concurrent applications. So on the left here, we have a browser, a client is making a call to an application. And this application for our example is written in Java and Spring. In normal Spring MVC applications, we may do things like read or persist from a database using something like JDBC or JPA. We may uh, use an input stream to write to a file. We may uh, communicate over HTTP to talk to another service. Uh, this could be a public a API. This could be another service in our microservice architecture or it might be communicating to message brokers. These are all blocking APIs. So this is where virtual threads make sense. Um, this application that we've been working on works great on our laptop and even in the initial stages of implementation. However, once news spreads about our exceptional new application, you start experiencing a high volume of traffic causing it to crash. Hmm. Why is this happening? What can we do to prevent this? Well, let's tackle those two questions. So why is this happening? So the why is because of the thread per request model. So again, we have a client that makes a request over to our server. When that request is happening, uh, the server will go ahead, let's say in the instance of talking to a database via JDBC, JPA. When we make this request, the thread, the operating system thread, so the Java thread that is tied to the operating system thread, is going to be in use because we are talking to a database. This is a blocking operation. So while that thread is in use, nothing else can use it. And as you can see, as our application grows and we need another thread to maybe talk to another database or we need a thread to make a call to another service, uh, uh, these are all threads being tied up in our system. The important part here is that there is a maximum number of concurrent threads that are allowed. This is based on your hardware, the system, et cetera. When the number of maximum threads has been reached, each subsequent request will need to wait for a thread to be released to fulfill that request. That is why when we experience that high throughput, uh, we can see some slowness in an application. We can even see some 500 errors because it can't fulfill that request. So that is thread per request kind of in a nutshell, right? And the reason that happens is because Java is made of threads. When you create a new thread in Java, it is tied to the operating system threads. This means that we have uh, a finite pool of threads that we can take advantage of. And we just saw what would happen in that scenario. So how can we solve for this currently in our applications? When we talk about scalability solutions, we have one way that we can solve for this, which is by using addressing this using more hardware. So we can scale vertically, adding more memory or CPU. We can scale horizontally, adding more servers. Another approach to this is asynchronous programming. We can solve this by writing non-blocking software. And like any architecture choice, there are pros and cons to each. So we have improved performance and responsiveness. Great, that's exactly what we are trying to get. 
Uh, we can improve performance when dealing with large data sets, also great. Uh, scalability, better resource utilization. We are using the resources that we have. We don't need to scale hardware. Uh, we do, you know, you may have to at some point, but we are utilizing the hardware that we have better. And composability is another pro. Some cons are this is kind of all or nothing. You can't like mix and match. Uh, it separates the task from the thread. Reactum programming does have a learning curve uh, and it can be harder to debug or profile. So that's how we can solve it today. Well, Java is introducing virtual threads. This is in uh, GDK 19 and 20 as a preview release. They just announced that this will go uh, into JDK 21. But what this does is it allows us to create these virtual threads denoted by the V here. And all of these virtual threads are really lightweight and inexpensive and easy to create. And these are tied to a platform thread that is tied to the operating system thread. So no longer are we tying up platform threads that are tied to that operating system thread. We're just using these lightweight virtual threads all over the place. So this is going to help us with high throughput servers with simple thread per request code using the same APIs. And I think what's really, really exciting about this, and I probably have said this 10 times in this video at this point, but we can change, we can do this, we can take advantage of virtual threads with little or no code changes in our Spring applications. So with anything, there are some questions that are gonna come up with this. We'll get into this uh, you know, in further videos, but that is my diagram as to kind of embracing virtual threads in Spring applications. I will share this, all of these images in the GitHub repository for this particular video. Uh, so go ahead and check that out if you want. Uh, but with that, what I wanna do now is actually walk into a quick demo. We can use this, we can see what this looks like today in a Spring application. So let's do that now. All right, so if you wanna start a new project by yourself, you can head over to start.spring.io, go ahead and select Maven and Java in the latest version of Spring Boot. So you could fill in some metadata and choose Java 20 now. I have Java 19, but uh, either or it doesn't matter. And all you're gonna do is select a couple of dependencies. Uh, actually, all we need is web. So again, this is going to help us improve applications performance when it comes to things like Spring MVC that does something blocking. Maybe it's writing to a file, maybe it's talking to a database. We're just gonna choose web though because I'm just gonna show off how this actually works. So with that, you can go ahead and generate your application, open it up in IntelliJ. I'll show you kind of the finished product, which you can go ahead and grab at github.com slash danvega slash loom. I'll leave a link in the description below. It'll have all those images we kind of just walked through and the final code for this. So with that, let's head over to IntelliJ and walk through a couple things. All right, so if we take a look at the palm.xml, you'll have some information about your project. Again, I'm using 19 uh, because this demo was from a week or two ago. The newest version on there is Java 20. Um, for our sake, uh, either will work. Uh, you have some dependency in here. Mine's uh, the Spring Boot Starter Web. And the only difference or the changes that you'll mean, need to make is if you come down to the build plugins, we have the Maven compiler plugin. You need to set up some configuration to enable preview because in 19 and 20, Virtual threads are a preview feature, so you need to add this compiler argument for enable preview. So again, if you're on 20, just change the source and the target to 20. Once this is in place, you can check out the application. I have this code commented out now for a reason, but we have a controller, and in the controller, we'll make a request to the root path. Uh, this just returns the thread, that current thread, and outputs its two string. So what I wanna do is actually run this application. And then what we'll do here is open up a terminal and I'll make a quick request. So using HTTP to localhost 8080. And you can see that we get a thread and it's using the main thread. So this is just outputting that threads to string. So we're getting the main thread. So now all we need to do in our Spring application is make a configuration change. And again, this is, there has been a lot of work done in the Spring code base to make sure that we are doing certain things right. 
But a lot of this is on the tools that we're using. So things like Tomcat and database uh, connectors. These need to be, and I'm air quoting here, kind of loom ready. So Tomcat has a way to become loom ready. We can go ahead and create a new bean called the Tomcat Protocol Handler Customizer. And what this does is set its executor to the new virtual thread per task executor. So it's no longer using uh, a normal thread, it's using the new virtual thread per task executor. So with that one simple change, and you can imagine this is something in the future that we will probably be able to do for you, and maybe it's just a settings change in, in say, application.properties. Uh, but once that change is made, we're gonna go ahead and restart our application, and we'll go back to the terminal, and we'll make that same request, and now you can see we are using a virtual thread. Uh, so we're using a virtual thread, and you can see the two string for it. So that was just a simple change. And as I said earlier, one of the really great things about this is that we are going to be able to take advantage of virtual threads with little or no changes to our code, which is really uh, the exciting part. So that's really all I wanted to cover today. I just wanted to talk about what virtual threads are, why we should care about them as Spring developers, and just show you a quick demo. But I will leave some links to some amazing blog posts by the Spring team in the description below that talks through really embracing virtual threads. Also, some performance analysis on what this means to you and your applications. I highly suggest going and reading through those. As always, friends, if you found value in this, please do me a favor, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the description below if you are excited about virtual threads and you plan, and plan on taking advantage of them in your spring applications. Uh, with that, I will see you in the next one. As always, happy coding, friends.